The short-term mission trip has become a summer fixture for Christian churches around America. They raise support in a variety of ways, then head out to take the gospel to unreached people around the globe. When they return, the kids can't wait to share their experience. They're fired up, at least for a while. And what about the mission fields they visit? Ask around, and you might find a different perspective. Career missionary Wilma Forster. There have been teams that have come down of young people. Their hearts are in the right place. They love God. But a team of 125 people, the logistics are huge. It creates a burden instead of a help. As a missionary in the bush of Africa, I've got everything I can do as a missionary to, to be a pastor of a local church, to meet the needs of my own family, includes my own children and their education, their schooling and all that. And with limited funds available, it, it does put a strain on you. One argument in favor of short-term trips is they lead to career choices in overseas evangelism. But according to a study by the American Society of Missiology, that connection isn't so clear. The study points out that while short-term missions have surged in the last 20 years, the number of new missionaries has actually declined. In Panama, I met one of those who recently answered the mission's call. Philip Brummett brought his family here a couple years ago after a short-term trip introduced him to the Kuna Indians. I'll always have a, a special home in my heart for short-term missions because if it wasn't for short-term missions, we wouldn't be here. But once he began living among the Kuna, he started seeing the effect of short-term groups on the tribe. Our hope is that we give them the resources that they need and let them take it for themselves. But when the short-termers come over and do the work for the nationals and then leave, there's no ownership that has taken place. After one mid-sized church sent their youth group down for a week, Philip was amazed at the cost. The money that they spent on food alone was enough for us to pay for one of our week training uh, for 30 of the, uh, of the Kunas on the island. But what about evangelism? Don't these trips usually result in locals being saved and kids taking that change back home? I had seen someone share the Jesus film over three nights and a handful of people got saved. And the last night they let, a, there was a Kuna pastor that preached and 35 people got saved. He preached in his own language to his own people, his own heart, and that made a tremendous impact. Do you want to be saved? If so, raise your hand. Everybody raises their hand, and uh, then they pack up and leave. And then the following Sunday, and the following Sunday again, and the following Sunday again, you don't see these people in church. A lot of people in our community have been saved uh, numerous times, but there's no change in their life. Jason Lowe heads up short-term missions at his church. Well, I think you have to balance those two things, uh, sending money. We do do a lot of that. We do send a lot of money. But my thought is that in taking people down there and allowing them to see it, you're raising up a generation of people who value missions. Then they're able to, I think, give more and stirred to give more. And it's, it's more of a reality for them. But the current trend is disturbing for missions organizations. Overall giving to missions has been declining lately, despite the increase in short-term missions. That means it takes many missionaries twice as long to raise the support needed to make it to the field. Stu Kinneborough is involved with a master's mission, a huge center that trains missionaries for long-term service. He says the priority shouldn't be short-term. There's over 6,000 unreached people groups in the world, and short-term missions can't get to most of them. The percentage of income that people give to the church has been declining in recent years, and of that, only about 1% is going to support missions. The solution is more long-term missionaries. We need more career, career missionaries. The fields are still wide under harvest. But what we see in missions is the other end of the spectrum. Every year, short-term missions is increasing. The church in America has to, to sooner or later sit back and figure out the expense that the church is going through yearly to send people overseas. We should be seeing more career missionaries. In fact, the opposite of that is true. We're seeing less and less career missionaries. None of the missionaries I spoke to said that we should stop doing short-term missions, but rather we should refocus our efforts to make sure we're spending our missions dollars as wisely as possible and not neglecting those who have given their lives to full-time service. One of the things that I like about short-term missions is it allows the people that go to really have a life-changing experience and when they come back to the States they realize what a privileged, blessed life that we have here. There is nothing wrong with a Christian taking a vacation to the mission field, but let's not call that missions.
Experts coming down are helpful if they're coming down to minister and they're not coming down just for a vacation. There is something in giving your life to something bigger than yourself. And in every aspect of my life, it is to, to reach people for Christ and to see them grow in the faith. Chuck Holton, CBN News.